Today we're going to be looking at the Flickr Creative Commons Attribution Tool, which is really handy for embedding images into digital platforms like your blog, or also incorporating images into your documents or any sort of uh, activity that you want to use with students, because it allows you to correctly attribute Creative Commons licensed images quickly and easily, and it is based on using images sourced from Flickr. So Flickr is a community website. It's basically an example of a social network, but it's a little bit different to Facebook and Instagram and networks like that because it's based around sharing photos. So there are uh, spaces for conversation and comments and groups and things like that. But the major uh, benefit of using Flickr is that it is a huge collection of photos that people from around the world have uploaded and shared. Now, not all of these photos are available for you to just use because a lot of them are copyrighted. However, there is the capacity for people to upload images and license them with Creative Commons. And this means that you can use these images, reproduce these images, as long as you follow the requirements of the particular Creative Commons license. So what we're going to look at today is this particular tool. And this is uh, the tool right here. So Basically, it's called Flickr CC Helper. And if you Google Flickr CC Helper or Flickr Attribution Tool, it will be one of the first results that come up. And it is created by uh, an online, uh, very generous online denizen called Cogdog, otherwise Alan Levine. He does some really great work. And he created this quite a while ago now, but it's still working really effectively. So basically the first step is you need to go to this page, cogdog.github.io slash Flickr CC helper. And then you can change these uh, if you would like these attributes, but I never really, I never do. Uh, all I do is take this blue button here and I simply drag it in up into my bookmark bar. That's all I do. It's very, very easy. It's been designed to make it very easy. Uh, although if you're interested in learning more about the code and things like that, you can you can dig deeper into, into that. Once you've got this installed and it's as easy as that, you go to Flickr. So Flickr is, as I said, this community where people share lots of images. So let's do a search for an image. So because um, I am, and you can probably, you probably already know, I am a Jack Russell fan. Let's just look up Jack Russell puppy, just so that we can find some cute photos. All right, oh, look at them, aren't they gorgeous? So what we're looking for is Creative Commons licensed images. So we need to go to any license, this drop down menu here. And I must actually tell you that you don't need to have an account with Flickr to do this. See, I'm not logged in to do this. If you want to create an, an account, there's nothing stopping you and it does make uh, access just a little bit more flexible and you can uh, upload your own images and participate in groups and things like that. But for the purposes of just sourcing Creative Commons license images, you don't need to create an account at this stage at least. So we wanna to go to this drop down menu and it gives us some options of the types of uh, images that we can look for. Now, it really depends on what your purpose for the image is. In most cases, if you're using the image for education, you're just going to be, all you're going to need is any image that's covered by the Creative Commons license. However, if, for example, you were wanting to find images that you could print on T-shirts to sell at the markets and have some sort of commercial use, this is the uh, uh, one that option that you're going to choose. If you want to edit the image in any way, if you want to take it into Photoshop or another tool and change the colours or add extra parts, um, extra layers to the image, you'd need modifications allowed. If you need both of those, obviously you choose commercial use and modifications. 
No known copyright restrictions means that the image is in the public domain, which technically means you don't need to do any sort of attribution, although it is best practice to acknowledge who the image belongs to and where it was sourced from. But for the purposes of using this tool, we're looking at Creative Commons licensed images. So we click on that option and all of these images are licensed in some way with Creative Commons. So all we need to do is find the image that we like. I think this guy looks really cute. So we can see that when we click on the image, here is the information about the Creative Commons license that has been applied. And this is less important because you're, if you're using it for education, but it's still interesting and good for you, especially if you're holding a teacher librarian role, to be familiar with the Creative Commons licensing. This one here means that you must attribute the image, which is what we're going to do using the tool. You must not use it for a commercial purpose, which is why we selected, we didn't select commercial per, uh, use option. And you must license in the same way. So what you, when you uh, use this image, you must license it in the same way. So this means there are some rights reserved in the use of this image, and these are the rights that are reserved. Now that I've selected my image, there's a couple of different things that I can do using the attribution helper, depending upon how I want to use the image itself. So let's say I want to incorporate this image into a document. So I'm going to open up Word and what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this image so that I can insert it into the Word document. And that's as easy as clicking on this little downward button arrow here and selecting the size of the image. I just want a small image, so I'm going to download that. Remember, if you the larger this image, the higher quality it is. So that's going to take up more, uh, make your document larger in size but it will mean it's higher quality. So depending upon what you're doing with that image. So now it's downloaded here in my downloads bar. So I take my Word document and I'm going to insert that picture. So from this device, just going to do a little bit of thinking. Uh, I've got it in my downloads, there it is. So I've inserted my picture and I need to add the attribution. Now, normally doing the attribution could take a little bit of time to get all of the information, but that's where the advantage of the attribution helper is. It's really useful because what I can do is, let's just minimize that for a moment. I can click on the, oh, sorry. Uh, click on the attribution button that I installed earlier and a little window will pop up. Now, if your window does not pop up, just check that your browser isn't blocking pop-ups because sometimes we have that setting because of advertising and annoying pop-ups or uh, for security reasons, and uh, that will stop this from working. So check your pop-ups if you find that this doesn't appear for you. And here is the attribution text already done for me with the license by NCND. So uh, let's buy non-commercial, no derivatives, and the name of the image, who took the, who owns the image, the link. So the attribution is done perfectly for me. So I just have to highlight that text, copy it, open up my Word document again, and paste that in. And there we go. We've got the perfect attribution under the image ready to go. So that's really useful for documents and printing. Now, it's actually even easier if you want to insert this image into a web platform like your blog. So let's go back again and I'll just close that just for a moment. So here is my blog. So I, this is what I'm looking for. This is my final product that I'm looking for, the image and the attribution text underneath. Uh, but what I can do, rather than having to upload the image and then up, and then copy and paste the attribution, it's actually really easy when you have the attribution helper. All you do is open the page with the image you want, click the attribution helper, and instead of 
choosing the text, you choose one of these. Now, I want the attribution with the image to be included in my blog. So this is the HTML that I want to copy. If I just wanted the attribution, if I'd already inserted the image for whatever reason, I could copy this one here. But I want the whole attribution and the image. So I copy that, go back to my blog. Now, you do need to remember that you need to go to the text option because we're adding HTML. So we go to the text page to add that and we right click and paste that information straight in. And when I go back to the visual editor, there is the image, can't view it properly. There we go. There is the image. And even better than copying and pasting the text, the attribution is actually hyperlinked for me automatically by using the attribution helper. So this clicks links back to the image itself. This links to the owner of the images account page on Flickr. And this links to the Creative Commons license itself. So the attribution is even more correct when I use that attribution helper tool and add the code, let's just wait for it, add this code attribution with image. So it makes life with inserting images really easy and quick when it comes to web resources because it does it just beautifully and automatically. So it's worth your while to install the Flickr Creative Commons Attribution Helper and to think about using Flickr Creative Commons license images when you're looking to add interest to your post. Now, of course, this does mean that there needs to be an image available on Flickr that meets your requirements. Um, we can't always be posting cute photos of puppies in our blog, unfortunately. But when you are looking for that a uh, little bit generic image to highlight, maybe you're talking about relaxation and you want a photo of a nice beach or something like that, this is certainly a place where you can find that and easily insert it into your blog. And you'll find that there are millions and millions of great photos and more than likely you'll find one that meets your needs.